Wow, so lots of changes to many heroes. There's already been discussion amongst other YouTubers, so if you don't know the changes yet, then I recommend watching one of their videos or click the link below to see detailed information about the changes before watching the rest of this video because I'll only be summarizing the changes. This video is all about my predictions on the upcoming meta and potential problems or solutions to things that this patch will cause. A while ago I predicted Ana being the new replacement for Mercy before pros were even using her. But I didn't realize it wasn't until Zenyatta's nerf to Discord all those months ago that would steamroll Ana into the meta and into the OP healer that she ended up becoming. All this to say, my predictions are fairly decent, so this should be fun. I also want to preface this by saying what I heard from another YouTuber which I totally agree with, and that is, this patch seems like Blizzard actually wants to force a meta rather than actually fixing anything. Which is the same pitfall I felt Destiny went down into and ultimately causing me to leave the game entirely, and why I no longer cover Destiny content unfortunately. But Blizzard, I feel is much better at these things, and we're very far from the point where I feel like patch after patch is just unnecessary changes that make the game not fun, like in Destiny. So let's get started. So Zen's little buff to his Discord is very interesting. It seems Blizzard is really trying to reduce the heavy reliance on barriers, aka Reinhardt. Hard to comment on it because I see both good and bad things about this. It's good because it will allow flankers to do more work despite healers being behind a Rhin shield thinking they have absolute protection. Now at the time of this video they have reverted that change so not sure if they'll bring it back but if they do then it might put Rhine in danger of being hardly valued at all like he used to and may put more emphasis on dive comps or something new entirely. This could put Ryan too much down on the priority list, but may be a good middle ground for his current pick rate on the pro scene. The alternate fire animation reduction is also nice too. So okay, so I have a bit to say about this. I really, really like the Winston change. It's actually good for both sides of the fight. See, allowing the barrier to start the cooldown immediately after he drops it makes his barrier more predictable in its usage, which is good for the enemy team. There are times where you put the barrier down and the enemy just got wiped out or something, and the whole time your barrier is still up and the timer hasn't even started. By the time the enemy comes back into the fight, his cooldown would still have 6-8 seconds left on it after getting no real value out of the first one and having to wait. This will obviously allow Winston to get into skirmishes more often as well instead of waiting around until you're ready to engage the enemy or jump in prematurely before your kit is readily available to you. It's one of those little changes that I think will have a big effect on the meta because many people don't realize how strong Winston already is and how he just literally melts squishy targets simultaneously. Think about it, he has the ability to leap on anyone he wants, hit multiple targets without any aim required, and has a barrier with enough HP to equal a Roadhog's health. If you thought Winston was useless before, then this buff should change your mind and show you what he can really do in the hands of a master. Junkrat is getting one simple change, but the domino effect is there nonetheless. This change will allow Junkrat to do the close range game, and I'm not entirely sure if that's a good thing. I doubt this will make him OP, but he will undoubtedly be super annoying being able to go right up to your face and do 240 damage with no risk to him. He'll just need to fire one grenade for the initial 120, and follow up with a concussion mine for another 120, all with no risk to him. In fact, if he misses the initial grenade at that range, which would be difficult, he'd simply damage you anyways for 120 with the mine while creating distance between you two. So on second thought, maybe he will be a big problem. So yeah, we'll probably see more Pharahs in order to counter him because he will be dangerous at almost all ranges. Junkrat players will also have no fear going right up to a Reinhardt and laying down the fire while placing a trap in case he decides to charge him. This also affects Winston heavily. As a Winston, I love taking on junk rats. I jump on them, zap them a little bit so they start firing at me. Then I place the barrier down and basically get them to kill themselves, bouncing the nades off my barrier. That will no longer be a thing in any way, shape, or form. And that's a bit sad and scary. Sombra is becoming one of my favorites, not so much because I feel in tune with her kid or something, but because she is the underdog, still, even after the last buff, and I firmly believe she is really strong if you play her right. 
Too many people use her like Tracer, while they still admit she's not Tracer, but they still try to play her as Tracer. If you want to know how I play Stonebread, check out my tips video in the description below. As a summary, I started to get this feeling with her playstyle even before Jeff Kaplan said anything about her being a disruptor and not a backline assassin. Basically, I use her invis and translocate mostly to get a very specific hack that I need to get on a key target to help the team. I don't use it to harass healers and take them on 1v1. Well, maybe sometimes for fun if I'm feeling confident. But mostly, no, I don't use it for that. So with this upcoming buff, it feels like Blizzard really wants a Sombra meta, and they just might get it. Already, Sombra is a much better counter to Bastion than Genji. In fact, I'm still surprised to this day that people still consider Genji a counter to Bastion. I mean, 90% of Bastion players know rule number one to playing Bastion, which is to not shoot at Genjis. At least until you know the deflex is on cooldown. Right there removes any value to Genji being a counter to him. But Sombra... She gets behind him and hacks him so fast that he actually needs help from his teammates to prevent that. Otherwise, he'll constantly be looking at his back, not contributing to the team. Sure, he could time when her cooldowns are ready and try to predict when she'll hack, but in my experience, I don't usually go in for the hack until the team is made aware of my plan and ready to push in when I do. So it's not always done off cooldown. That's why Symmetra turrets can help him out. Anyways, so her buff will basically allow her to play more like Tracer? because her translocator will almost always be made available to her while she's invisible figuring out her next move. She'll require less planning in her engagements and be much more mobile like Tracer. So this could stem a more aggressive playstyle with such a crazy exit ability that readily available. I have a firm prediction of a Sombra meta coming where she'll be almost a necessary pick on both sides because a good counter to Sombra is not just Winston, but having your own Sombra. Lastly is the one that hurts the most. Now at the time of this video, the Ana nerf has been reverted, but I'm going to assume that they will put it back before the patch goes live, even though they likely won't. Blizzard has said that even though the nerf won't go through this time, most likely, there's still a good chance that the next patch will have these changes. Now because of Ana's utility, I don't think this will take her completely out of the meta. The ability to actually prevent heals and sleep key targets like Bastion is still very useful that Mercy cannot bring to the table. But Mercy's heals will likely be more preferred, at least on the casual level, over Ana's so you'll likely not see Ana picked at lower levels at all because of this. I predict Mercy will see much more usage on the pro level due to the recent buff to where she is also invulnerable when she uses her res. And I don't know about you, but I already get a bit frustrated when I have her almost down and she reses and I can't touch her for a full second. And then you have her whole team to now deal with. I'm fine with Ana's damage nerf, even though on console she's a really reliable counter to Farah who is very strong on console. But we may just see more Riddlemakers even more than what we're currently seeing. So my full prediction is that Farah will become even more strong in order to counter Junkrat and because of Ana's damage nerf. Which is scary for console players because it's already extremely difficult to counter a good Farah. Winston is actually a pretty good counter to Farah as well as Sombra so we'll naturally see more usage from them because of their respective buffs. I think we will see nerf Sombra posts on Reddit and possibly call a nerf to Junkrat since the balance of Junkrat is the possibility of him missing his shots. Which is highly unlikely when he's right next to you with no punishment in the fact that he will no longer damage himself. I also see Mercy in a good spot because personally I feel Mercy's heals should be stronger than anyone else's due to the simple fact that she is the only healer in the game that cannot deal damage and heal at the same time. So her heals should be stronger than Ana's in my opinion. So what do you guys think about these changes? Do you think any of my predictions will pan out or did I miss a key variable that goes against my predictions? Leave a comment below. If you, if you enjoyed the video be sure to share it, like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.